Music videos from the 90s made me believe one thing. When I grew up, I wanted to live in a roadside motel. Forever wandering the endless stretch of asphalt, paved in gold, as illustrated in that fastball song, The Way. It's always summer, it never gets cold. They never get hungry, they never get old and gray. The nostalgia machine convinced me that when you are on the road, you are ageless, immortal, forever young. Motel rooms, your ever-changing home. Truck stops, your fully stocked kitchens. Summer rages eternally in that acid-soaked sun just beyond a jagged mountain range. That childhood dream was about to come true in my early 30s with my girlfriend, Sam. Back in 2017, almost one year after we met, Sam and I made the big decision to cohabitate as a couple. She was a stand-up comedian from Reno who didn't take shit. She listened deeply, cared even deeper, and could floor you with one-liners, roasting or flattering. I was smitten, even a bit scared to ask her out at first, but I did, and she said yes, and things had been going smoothly from that point forward. Before signing our new lease, Sam and I, plus two of her friends, were going to take a road trip from San Francisco to LA. These were her besties, cool friends in the SF comedy scene. I wanted to make a good impression by offering to drive the nearly 400 mile trip, as well as take my 1999 Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition. Mm. My luxurious rides features a six disc CD player in the middle compartment and one extra seventh disc available up front could not compensate for the nearly 20-year-old engine clocking over 250,000 miles when I originally bought it. <laughs> My trusted steed was long in the tooth, but she'd carry you from point A to B. Getting to LA wasn't an issue. It was the return trip to San Francisco. About 50 miles north of the San Fernando Valley, my Explorer's AC kicked the bucket, forcing us to sweat in the mid-May heat of an early Dutch oven summer. Everyone in the car guzzled down their water bottles in a flash. A hundred miles later, my steering wheel suddenly became resistant to turning. And halfway to our destination, my 1999 Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition caught fire under the hood and started to smoke, forcing me to pull over in Lost Hills, California. Don't know Lost Hills by name? Consider yourself lucky. Anyone who has ever taken I-5 between Northern and Southern California knows you're not in it for the scenery. God bless the Central Valley for keeping us fed and happy because she sure isn't a looker. <laughs> With Lost Hills last pick to prom. There is nothing to define this small town outside of oil rigs, dust, and a few Phillips stations. However, it claims one notable historic fact. Being the last place where James Dean souped up his ride before dying in an all too young blaze of infamous glory. They even have a museum in a truck stop dedicated to the rebel without a cause and his fiery demise. Crawling up to one of the three gas stations, I parked, waved the smoke away from the engine block and inspected the damage. A cable was hanging down to the ground between my tires, all things considered, not bad. Sam and her friends ventured into the Denny's to get some food and refill our water bottles while I hunted down a tow truck or service station. Turns out, in Lost Hills, there's only one man who lays claim to both, Mr. Fix-It, a gargantuan-sized townie with greasy locks of salt and pepper hair, cigarette-yellowed lychee fruit eyeballs, and purple-black taffy-crusted gums on full display when he chortled. Shit, dude, your car took it up the ass, huh? <laughs> Was Mr. Fix-It's greeting to me as he hitched up a toe. You might be here for a while, eh? We had two options for lodging, Super 8 on one side of the street, Motel 6 on the other. We opted for the latter. While Motel 6 indeed kept the lights on for us, our room had no art 
on the walls, nor really any accoutrement to speak of. Bare bones, Spartan living. The only amenity offered with our accommodations was a swimming pool infested with frogs and tadpoles. <laughs> it's only for one night, we told ourselves, toasting to this mini detour with plastic cups of lukewarm water that had been previously wrapped in more plastic, waste on waste in a wasteland where diesel engines purred us to sleep just beyond the walls. We'll hit the road in the AM and be back home by tomorrow night. We were not. <laughs> the Motel 6 in Denny's was our new home, with details about my car worsening almost by the hour. Mr. Fixit found the replacement part but could not guarantee its arrival unless I went with him to buy it in the town just a few exits south. I rode shotgun while Fixit rapped poetically about how shit's fucked, man, and other related topics, all of them <laughs> clamming me up with discomfort, forcing parroted, hollow affirmations. Yeah, man, eternally looped out of my mouth. Yeah. With the replacement part purchased, installment began. Now it was time for anxieties to overheat. Back at the Motel 6, Sam's friends managed to coax a cab driver from Gilroy to take them the rest of the 250 miles to San Francisco. Sam and I were jealous of their exit strategy, and I couldn't help but feel something else, too. Like I'd let everyone down. It was my clunker of a car I offered to drive, and it all petered out in this godforsaken hellhole. The next morning, Sam's friends skedaddled back onto I-5 North for a taxi ride home that cost them $500, plus a sizable tip. Chump change compared to the bill fix it was racking up for me over at his shop. His original estimate for parts and labor hovered slightly above $1,000. Not great, but doable. Then fix it found more issues, expensive ones. One grand turned into one and a half, then two with pricier predictions to come. Sam and I kept pinballing back and forth between the Motel 6 and the Denny's, now our respective bedroom and kitchen, while I panicked about the mechanic math Fix-It was adding up. But what could we do besides order another heap of soggy moons over my hammies and knock back glasses of sweaty ice waters in between bites? <sighs> Beyond money, I feared Sam would change her mind about moving in together. Like, this trip was an evil omen about our future. She inspected the worry slopped on my face, then reached across the table, took my hand, squeezing. Everything will be okay, she reassured me. Fix it buzzed my phone a few hours later. Car's ready, bro! <laughs> he was already on his way to pick me up, so I hydrated with the last of my water and jumped in his truck as soon as it squealed into the Denny's parking lot. Back at the shop, my explorer waited for us. Let me give her a final test, Fix-It said, not expanding on what he was testing or why he hadn't done it sooner. <laughs> Popping the hood, he jumped into the driver's seat and whipped the ignition. The car came alive, free of flames and smoke, only to putter into a shaky rumble. Seconds later, green liquid volcanoed out of the engine block, <laughs> sprang everywhere. Fix it, howled, the ghostly orbs in his skull entranced by the Gatorade geyser signaling pay dirt. Your radiator's six feet deep and no one's coming to the funeral! Ah! <laughs> not just the radiator, not the engine or the car. This was my funeral. I was never leaving Lost Hills. Sam and I were never moving in together. I was the new James Dean in town. <laughs> Dead end. In a moment of desperation, I asked Fix-It point blank, if I give you all the money in my savings account, can you get me out of here by tonight? <laughs> Fix-It rubbed his hands together, not promising anything other than seeing what he could do. Back at the Denny's, I slid into the booth next to Sam and unleashed a torrent of tears. But she did not dump me. Didn't doubt our future together. If Lost Hills was where we started and ended, so be it. Instead, she made the wise decision to order us a few beers, then a few more. It dawned on me in that second round that 
Sam had kept her cool this entire time, something I hadn't managed to do at all, making me fall in love with her even more. Right before the tipping point of tipsiness took over, my phone rang. All done, Fix It proclaimed. It had been less than two hours. Incredible, almost impossible. <laughs> On my way back to the shop, Fix It told me the damage wasn't going to be as expensive as I thought. Sure, it was over three and a half grand at this point, more than the value of the car, but he'd taken a few hundred bucks off the top. Never said why, and I didn't ask. The only question he flowed to me was, you haven't been drinking the water now, have you? I had. Sam, too. All of us drank it, parched every second of our stay in Lost Hills. Ah, oh, homie, that's where you messed up, Fix It scold with a tisk. They say the cars love the water here, so the more you drink, the longer they want to stick around. <laughs> Whatever logic that explanation did not hold, all I could respond with was, damn, shit's fucked. After spending my entire life savings in 72 hours, I raced my newly tuned up Explorer over to the Motel 6, sweeping up all of our belongings and throwing them in the trunk as fast as possible. Then I rushed over to grab Sam at the Denny's, dumping our water on the ground without explanation. We did not look back, our sights set on the bay. They say if you want to find out if you're going to make it with somebody, really put down roots and go in for the long haul, take a road trip with them. You'll see who they really are. Since Lost Hills, Sam and I have logged countless hours on the road, driving thousands of miles across the country on bigger and better adventures. From the high Sierra mountains to the plateaus of Taos, our trips haven't always been as memorable as that first one, but we get to experience them side by side. We wanted the highway, we're happier there today. Today, because we now live in Los Angeles, Sam and I frequently pass by Lost Hills on our trek to and from NorCal. When it comes time to cross paths with that dirty old town that we almost ended up in, our breaths remain held in a silent salute of respect, a little nod to a worthy adversary of a bygone era. But we never stop for any reason. And our throats remain salty dry for miles afterwards. Woo, Jake Arkey!